This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information computing and communication. It is the ninth and last one in a set of video clips on memory hierarchies and management. It explains the phenomenon called locality that the least recently used algorithm depends on in its implicit hypothesis that a least recently used block may be ejected from a cache memory because it is also the one that is least likely to be needed in the future. Without LRU and locality, managing a hierarchical memory or storage system efficiently would be totally impossible. The processor would spend most of its time waiting for information to come from lower and slower levels of memory and storage. Consider again the example of the previous video clip in this lesson. Observe that iteration around the loop of the integer sequence addition program would always find all the needed variables already in the cache, except in the first iteration. This is due to two manifestations of what is called locality of reference. The first of these manifestations is that the program accesses over and over again the same variables at the same addresses over time, mostly because of many iterations around its loop, as seen here with repeated accesses to the variable n at address 14. This is what is called temporal locality. Realistic programs always reaccess many times the same variables, especially as they typically contain many loops. The same happens during a week of winter sports where people reuse their snowboard every day because every day resembles the other days, like a repeating loop. The second of the manifestations of locality of reference is that the program accesses several variables that are closely located in space because all the variables that it needs were positioned together in memory by the compiler or assembler that produced the executable program. This is what is called spatial locality. All realistic programs, like the integer sequence addition program of our example, use many variables that are always located closely together by the compiler. The same happens during a day of winter sports, where people using their left ski will typically use their right ski at the same time, simply because the two belong together as part of the same program. Now, locality of reference is a wonderful property without which nothing would work. It is, however, affected by parameters of the memory system. Imagine for a second that blocks would be smaller, containing only two words instead of four. The same size cache would then contain more blocks, but they would, of course, be smaller. Starting the integer sequence addition program would thus certainly cause two cache faults instead of just one to load the same variables. Spatial locality would thus be worse, although performance could be maintained with a smaller and thus cheaper cache. Now imagine for a second the opposite, cache blocks of eight words instead of four. The same size cache would then contain fewer, albeit larger blocks. As a result, the var variables m, n, and s could, however, no longer all fit in the cache at the same time because they would be in different blocks and only one of these blocks could fit in the cache at a time. This would cause two cache faults instead of one at each execution of the program. Thus, in this case, we have a degraded temporal locality, although this could be compensated by a larger and more expensive cache. Thus one sees that for a given size cache, there is somewhere an optimal block size, above and below which the number of cache defaults increases. Just be aware that this optimal block size may be different for each possible program. Thus it may seem theoretically impossible to determine one optimal block size for all programs. In practice, a computer tends to execute a mix of multiple programs at the same time. Actually, its different processors continually keep jumping between active programs. 
From a cash default point of view, this is, however, equivalent to executing one single large average program. And for average mixes of typical real programs, it is quite feasible to pick a cache block size that is not too far from the optimal for most programs. The existence of cache memories and their behavior cannot and should not be ignored by programmers, though. Consider, for example, a program that would add all the elements of a matrix. A programmer could imagine doing so row by row, as on the left side of this picture. Alternatively, she could imagine doing so column by column, as on the right side of this picture. The two resulting programs are shown on this slide. For a small matrix of which all elements could fit in the cache at once, either implementation will work fine. For a large matrix, though, the choice of implementation may have drastic consequences for the performance of the resulting program. If the matrix is stored row by row, it will be imported in the cache row by row. If the program then adds the elements row by row, the elements will be found in the cache in the order in which they are added, thus causing a few cache defaults as possible. By contrast, if the program adds the elements column by column in a row by row memory layout, the program will need to import the matrix elements into the cache in an order that is completely orthogonal to the memory assumptions of spatial locality and the resulting performance will be catastrophic. These differences are shown on this screenshot from an actual execution of both programs in a row-by-row -row memory layout. The top half of the slide shows the performance of the row-by-row -row program, whereas the bottom half of the slide shows the performance of the column-by-column -column program. Both programs add the elements of a thousand-by-thousand thousand matrix, then in an increment of a hundred, add again the elements of an 1100 by 1100 matrix. One can see that the row by row program completes these two steps in under two tenths of a second, thus achieving somewhere between six and nine million operations per second. By contrast, the column by column program completes these two steps in two to four tenths of a second, thus achieving respectively only three or 4 million operations per second. The programs being identical except for their order of calculation, the difference is due exclusively to cache locality effects, which shows that such locality effects just cannot be ignored by programmers. Even a spreadsheet user is a programmer.